Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 31st on time series modeling and forecasting. So far we have considered univariate time series that is the time series has been observed on a single variable and uh, in univariate time series we assume that the present observation depends upon past observations and past shocks and uh, that is how we develop different time series models like ARMA models. Now, in several applications you may have time series observations on several variables and not only that those variables may be related with each other. So, one variable may be having impact on the other variable. So, you have multivariate time series observations. In multivariate analysis also we have uh, observations on several variables, but in multivariate analysis your uh, observation vectors are independently distributed. This is not the case with the multivariate time series observations or multivariate time series models. Uh, different uh, observations uh, may have some kind of autocorrelation structure or may depend upon each other. So, suppose you are interested in, in a particular variable say then the current observation of that variable depends upon the past observations of that variable related past shocks. Not only that it may depend upon the current and past values of other times these variables. So, not only on the current other time series variables, it may depend upon the past uh, time series variables also. And uh, if in modeling you can accommodate this kind of information, means if you are interested in a particular time series and then you have uh, observations on some other time series also which are related with this time series. And, uh, while modeling this particular time series, if you can uh, take care of this kind of information, then probably it will provide you better forecast. So, you can improve your forecasting. So, now I am going to consider uh, multivariate time series processes. In particular, in this lecture, I will discuss different moments, cross moments and the conditions for stationarity of multivariate time series models. Uh, so, multivariate processes or vector processes emerge when several related time series processes are observed simultaneously over time. So, you have two kinds of dependence, one between several time series, between several variables of the time series and the other between different time series observations or between the observations at different time points. Then one may be interested in investigating the cross relationships between the series. So, you may be interested in how a particular variable, a time series 
a particular time series variable is related with the other variables. So, this kind of cross relationships may be of your interest. Then the objectives for jointly analyzing and modeling the series. So, you may have different objectives for jointly analyzing and modeling the series. You may want to improve your forecasts or you may want to improve your model. You may be interested in the cross relationships between different variables, how a particular time series variable is going to affect the other time series variable, whether the time series variable of interest is going to be affected by the current values of other variables or the past values of the other variables. So, this kind of uh, things you may have in your mind. Then uh, the objective may be to understand the dynamic relationships over time among the series, this kind of dynamic relationships, how the variables are related with each other. Then to improve accuracy of forecast for individual series by utilizing the additional information available from the related series. So, if you we can utilize the information contained in other series for forecasting a particular individual series, then you may get more accurate forecasts. So, vector autoregressive moving average or VARMA times these models have been developed keeping these objectives in mind. So, these are actually multivariate extension of ARMA models, vector autoregressive moving average models. And these processes are of considerable interest in several fields. So, for example, in economics one may be interested in simultaneous behavior of interest rate, inflation, money supply, unemployment, etcetera. So, how these variables are related with each other, how interest rate is going to affect the inflation. or how the interest rate of a particular period is going to affect the inflation of next period. So, this kind of dynamic behavior, whether inflation is affected by the current interest rate or one period lacked interest rate or by both. So, this kind of dynamic behavior may be of your interest or how un unemployment is affected by inflation. Then focus may be on simultaneous study of times series of GDP percentage of people below the poverty line, unemployment rate, female headed households, crime, average income, minimum wages, etcetera. So, you may have times series observations on uh, these variables then you may be interested in the dynamic behavior of these variables means how a particular set of variables is going to affect to say GDP, whether the current uh, unemployment rate is affected by the current GDP or it is affected by the GDP of past period. So, this kind of dynamic behavior may be of your interest. Uh, then in environmental sciences and agriculture, the so joint study of time series observations of maximum and minimum temperatures, rainfall, atmospheric humidity, wind speed and direction etcetera. These variables may be going to affect each other. 
and then you have time series observations on these variables. And then uh, there is one more variable which may be of your interest, say total production of wheat. Now, total production of wheat may be affected by some of these environmental variables. Now, suppose after proper modeling, you observe that total production of wheat is uh, affected by uh, previous year's rainfall. Then you know in a particular season, when the total production of wheat increases, the prices of wheat decrease. So, most of the people like to buy wheat during that period. They dump wheat for the whole year consumption during those particular months. Now, suppose uh, you know that uh, the prices of wheat are affected by the previous year's rainfall. And then you get the information that the rainfall in a particular year was not proper, it was below the average. Then you can predict that next year prices of wheat are going to increase even during the wheat crop season. So, many people they would like to buy wheat before that season when the prices are low, because they know that uh, crop will not be good. So, prices are going to increase even during the wheat uh, production season. So, they will uh, dump the wheat before the season, before that. Uh, so, it, um, these models are also applied in health and environmental related studies. So, joint study of air pollution level, number of asthma patients visiting the hospital, number of registered cars in a city, etcetera. Pollution level may be affected by the number of registered cars in a city. Then asthma patients may be affected by the pollution level. Number of asthma patients visiting the hospital may be affected by air pollution level of uh, one period lagged observation. So, the relationship uh, is not static, it is dynamic relationship. Now, before going to the vector uh, autoregressive and vector autoregressive moving average processes. I am going to briefly give you some of the matrix algebra results, which you may require during this these lectures on the multivariate time series models. So, first I define eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, suppose A is an n, n cross n square matrix, then uh, we define f alpha equal to determinant of a minus lambda eigen. Then f lambda is a polynomial of order n in lambda, because this is the determinant of an n cross n matrix. So, you get a polynomial of order n in lambda. Now, suppose lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n are n roots of this equation determinant of a minus lambda i n equal to 0. So, for i equal to 1 to n, determinant of a minus lambda i i n is equal to 0. And since this determinant is equal to 0, 
the matrix A minus lambda i i n is a singular matrix. And since A minus lambda i i n is a singular matrix, different columns of this matrix are linearly dependent. So, there exists a vector q i such that a minus lambda i i n q i is equal to 0. Or you can write a q i is equal to lambda i q i. So, corresponding to each eigenvalue, you may find at least uh, one such kind of vector q i. Then lambda i's are called the eigenvalues or characteristic roots or latent roots of A. And q i is the eigenvector of A, q i is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda i of A. Then we consider some results of matrix algebra. Suppose A is a non singular matrix, then there exists a non singular matrix Q such that Q inverse A Q is equal to lambda or A is equal to Q lambda Q inverse. So, again, suppose uh, Q1, Q2, Qn are n linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. And then we form the matrix Q with columns Q1, Q2, so on, Qn. So, this Q is n cross n matrix. Now, A Q is equal to A Q1, A Q2, a q n. And a q 1 is equal to lambda 1 q 1, a q 2 is equal to lambda 2 q 2 and a q n is equal to lambda n q n. So, you can write this as Q1, Q2, Qn, and then we take a diagonal matrix with elements lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n, all other elements are equal to 0, or this is actually Q matrix. So, you get Q and uh, then this capital lambda is equal to diagonal lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n this matrix. So, A q is equal to q lambda, then q inverse A q is equal to q inverse q lambda, which is equal to lambda. So, q inverse A q is equal to lambda. So, you get this result. There exists a non singular matrix q such that q inverse A q is equal to lambda and then you can write A equal to Q lambda Q inverse. Uh, now, you can easily verify that determinant value of A is equal to product I equal to 1 to n lambda I, because determinant value of A is equal to determinant value of, you can write A equal to Q lambda Q inverse. So, this is equal to determinant of Q, determinant of lambda, determinant of Q inverse and then you get determinant of lambda and remember lambda is a diagonal matrix with elements lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. So, its determinant value is equal to 
the product of its diagonal elements which is equal to product i equal to 1 to n lambda i. Similarly, trace of a can also be written as trace of q lambda q inverse and you know that trace of a b is equal to trace of b a. So, you can write it as trace of lambda q inverse q which is equal to trace of lambda and since lambda is a diagonal matrix, its trace is the sum of the diagonal elements summation lambda i. Third result a to the power m again you write a equal to q lambda q inverse then q lambda q inverse and so on q lambda q inverse. You multiply q lambda q inverse m times. So, this q inverse q is identity matrix again you get q inverse q which is a, an identity matrix and so on. So, ultimately you obtain q lambda to the power m q inverse. Uh, now, we define mean vector and variance covariance matrix of a random vector. Suppose, x is a p cross 1 random vector and expectation of x i is equal to mu i for all i equal to 1 to p. So, mu i is the mean of x i, expectation of x i minus mu i square is equal to sigma i i which is the variance of x i. Similarly, the covariance between x i and x j is equal to sigma i j. Then mean vector of x is defined as say expectation of this vector x equal to expectation of x 1, expectation of x 2, so on expectation of x p which is equal to mu 1, mu 2, mu p. So, this vector mu 1, mu 2, mu p is the mean vector of random vector x. Similarly, we define the variance covariance matrix of x as expectation of x minus mu x minus mu transpose and then if you take product of these two vectors you get expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 square so on expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 x p minus mu p and so on you get this matrix and then expectation of this term is sigma 1 1 and so on here you get sigma 1 p then you get sigma p 1 here, sigma p p here. So, you get this p cross p matrix. The diagonal elements of this matrix give you the variances of different components of x vector x 1, x 2, x 3 and the off diagonal elements give you different covariances. That is why this matrix is called the variance covariance matrix of x or this is also called the dispersion matrix of x. Then for two random vectors x and y with their mean vectors mu x and mu y, the cross covariance matrix between x and y is defined as say sigma x y equal to expectation of x minus mu x y minus mu y transpose. And if you look at the i j th element of sigma x y, then i j th element is expectation of x i minus mu x i y j minus mu y j and this gives you the covariance between x i and y j. Cross covariance means the covariance between i th element of x and j th element of y and uh, sigma x y is the matrix of cross covariances or cross covariance matrix between x and y.
Now, we define the stationary multivariate time series. So, suppose y t is equal to y t 1, y t 2, y k t transpose t belongs to capital T, capital T is equivalent to plus minus 1, plus minus 2, so on. And this y t is a k dimensional time series vector at time t. The process y t this is actually a vector time series process or multivariate time series process. Then this process is stationary if the joint probability distribution of y t 1, y t 2, y t n is the same as the joint distribution of y t 1 plus l, y t 2 plus l, so on y t n plus l for all t 1, t 2, t n, n and all leads all legs l. So, the definition of stationality is uh, the same as the definition of stationality for univariate time series processes. Now, we define different moments of the process. We assume that the process is stationary and the mean vector and covariance matrix are finite. Then the mean vector of the process expectation of y t is equal to mu and we write it equal to mu 1, mu 2, so on, mu k transpose. Covariance matrix is expectation of y t minus mu, y t minus mu transpose is equal to sigma. You can also write it as gamma 0. Then cross covariance and cross correlation matrices for the stationary process are defined here. Say for the stationary process, the covariance between y i t and y j t plus l depends only on the lag l because the process is stationary and it does not depend on time t for all i j equal to 1 to so on. Uh, and then for all k, l and t also. Gamma i i l is equal to expectation of y t i minus mu i, y t plus l i minus mu i. This gives you the auto covariance function of y i t. So, gamma i i l is the auto covariance function of univariate time series y i t. Then the cross covariance between y i t and y j t at lag l is defined as gamma i j l equal to expectation of y i t minus mu i y j t plus l minus mu j which is equal to the covariance between y i t and y j t plus f. Then you may also define cross correlation between y i t and y j t at lag l. Just defined as rho i j l equal to gamma i j l divided by gamma i i 0 which gives you the variance of y i t and gamma j j 0 which is the variance of y j t to the power half. And then using cross covariances, you may define the cross covariance matrix. Gamma L is equal to expectation of y t minus mu y t plus L minus mu transpose. So, this is equal to gamma 1 1 L gamma 1 2 L so on gamma 1 K L and so on here you have gamma K 1 L gamma K 2 L so on gamma K K L. So, this capital gamma L is the cross covariance matrix. Now, we define the cross correlation matrix rho L. Actually, 
the ith element of rho l is equal to rho i j l. And then the expression for rho i j l is gamma i j l divided by gamma i i naught gamma j j naught to the power half. So, if you define a diagonal matrix V equal to diagonal gamma 1 1 naught gamma 2 2 naught so on gamma k k naught then you can write this matrix to L as V to the power minus half gamma L V to the power minus half where gamma L is the matrix of auto cross auto covariances. Now, we prove these results rho i i l is equal to rho i i minus l, rho i j l is equal to rho j i minus l, then gamma i j l is equal to gamma j i minus l. So, first we prove this result and from this result you can easily verify both of these two results. Now, gamma i j L is the covariance between y i t and y j t plus L. You can also write it as the covariance between y j t plus L y i t both are same. Now, here the lag between t plus l and t is l, here the lag between t and t plus l is minus l. So, this is actually equal to the auto covariance between j and i with lag minus l. Then using this result of auto covariances, you can easily verify this result for auto correlations or this result for auto correlations. So, in this result, rho i j l equal to rho j i minus l, if you take i equal to j, then you get rho i i l equal to rho i i minus l. And then from here you obtain gamma L equal to gamma minus L transpose, because the i j th element of gamma L which is gamma i j L is the j i j i th element of gamma minus L. So, gamma L minus L transpose is equal to gamma L. Similarly, you can easily verify that rho L is equal to rho minus L transpose. Actually, this uh, cross covariance and cross correlation matrix structure summarizes the dynamic interrelationships uh, among the components of the process. Your the process uh, y t is a multivariate process, then it has different components and its different components may be interrelated with each other and that interrelationship is dynamic in nature, dynamic in the sense that uh, the value of say y t i may be related with the uh, y uh, say L p the lagged value of y j say y j t minus L. So, the relationship is dynamic in nature. Now, suppose uh, 
you have k dimensional vectors a 1, a 2, a n then for all n summation i equal to 1, 1 to n, summation j equal to 1 to n, a i transpose gamma i minus j a i is equal to variance of summation i equal to 1 to n, a i transpose y t minus i. And this variance is always greater than or equal to 0. So, you can say that cross covariance matrices gamma L and cross correlation matrices rho L are positively semi direct. Then uh, we can second order or covariance stationary processes. If process y t is second order stationary, if expected value of y t is equal to mu, it does not depend on t gamma L equal to expectation of y t minus mu y t plus L minus mu transpose depends only on the lag L. So, actually this is how we define second order stationary process uh, for univariate time series also. Now, we define covariance generating function. Covariance generating function of a vector process is defined as g z is equal to summation l equal to minus infinity to plus infinity gamma l z to the power l. You remember that in a similar manner we define the auto covariance generating function for the time series process or univariate time series process also. Uh, here we impose the condition that summation L equal to minus infinity to plus infinity mod gamma i j L is finite for all i and j and for all L also. Now, some relations for linear filtering of a stationary vector process. So, suppose x t is r dimensional input series and y t is k dimensional output series. Then a multivariate linear time invariant filter relating x t to y t is y t equal to summation j equal to minus infinity to plus infinity psi j x t minus j. Actually, in a similar manner, we define linear filter for univariate processes also, but here in multivariate processes, this psi j is a matrix and its order is k cross r, because r x is r dimensional and y is k dimensional. So, it relates axis with y's. If psi j is equal to 0 for all j less than 0, then y t is equal to summation j equal to 0 to infinity psi j x t minus j. And in this case, we say that the filter is physically realizable or causal. Again, you remember that in a similar manner, we define causal filter for univariate processes also. And in this case, when psi j is equal to 0 for all j less than 0, y t is expressible only in terms of present and past values of input series x t. Future values of x t's are not involved in this relationship 1, provided psi j is equal to 0 for all j less than 0. Now, we define norm of a matrix A. Norm of a matrix A mod A square is equal to trace of A transpose A. 
So, a square of norm of a matrix is defined as trace of A transpose A. And if summation j equal to 0 to infinity, norm of psi j is finite, then we say that the linear filter is stable. Now, now if the linear filter is stable and the input random vectors x t have finite second moments, then for y t the representation 1 exists uniquely and converges in mean squared error in the sense that expected value of y t minus summation j equal to minus n to n psi j x t minus j y t minus summation j equal to minus n to n psi j x t minus j transpose this tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. And since this tends to 0 means y t converges in mean squared error to summation j equal to minus infinity to plus infinity psi j x t minus j. So, the representation 1 exists. Again, I am not going to give you the details of proof of this result, but uh, under the condition that the linear filter is stable and input random vectors have finite second moments, this result exists. Again, if uh, the linear filter is stable and x t is stationary with, with cross covariance matrix gamma x l, then y t is stationary with cross covariances gamma y l equal to covariance between y t, y t plus l equal to summation i equal to minus infinity to plus infinity, summation j equal to minus infinity to plus infinity psi i gamma x l plus i minus j psi j transpose. Uh, this result, uh, uh, of course, I am not going to give you the details of the proof, but you can easily verify. You just write here y t equal to summation j equal to 1 to n psi j x t minus j and y t plus l is equal to summation j equal to minus infinity to plus infinity psi j x t plus l minus j. And uh, then you find out the covariance between y t, y t plus l and then you can easily verify this result. Okay, now, we come to the linear model representation of the multivariate processes. Uh, so, walled infinite m a representation of a stationary vector pr process we consider. Suppose y t is a purely non-deterministic stationary process with mean vector mu. y t is k cross 1, mu is also k cross 1. Then y t minus mu is equal to summation j equal to 0 to infinity psi j u t minus j. or y t is equal to mu plus summation j equal to 0 to infinity psi j u t minus j or you can write it as mu capital psi b u t, where psi b is equal to summation j equal to 0 to infinity psi j b to the power j. This is a k cross k matrix of backward shift operators and its i j element is psi i j b is equal to summation l equal to 0 to infinity c i j l b to the power l. Now, suppose u t is the error of, of best one step ahead predictor of y t say and we denote it by y hat t minus 1 1. And this predictor is based on y t minus 1, y t minus 2, so on. And we write u t equal to y t minus y hat t minus 1, 1. 
So, this u t denotes the error of best one step ahead predictor. Then y hat t minus 1 1 is linear projection of y t on linear space spanned by y t minus 1, y t minus 2 so on. Actually y hat t minus 1 1 is a linear function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2 so on. Further u t is uncorrelated with y t minus j and so this is also uncorrelated with u t minus j for all j greater than or equal to 1. And then this implies that all these u t's are uncorrelated with each other and by stationary stationarity assumption we also observe that all these have constant covariance matrix. Now, we can write one step ahead predictor as y hat t minus 1 1 equal to mu plus summation j equal to 1 to infinity psi j y t minus j minus y hat t minus j minus 1 1. Remember that y hat t minus 1 1 is a linear function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2 and so on. So, you can say this part gives you the linear function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2 and so on. Then you have subtracted this part means you have subtracted y hat t minus j minus 1, 1 from y t minus j and then you can adjust all these terms means summation j equal to 1 to infinity psi j y hat t minus 1 t minus j minus 1 1 into mu. Then y t minus j minus y hat t minus j minus 1 1 gives you u t minus j. So, you get this walled representation mu plus summation j equal to 1 to infinity psi j u t minus j. And then y t is equal to u t plus y hat t minus 1 1. So, this is equal to mu plus u t plus summation j equal to 1 to infinity psi j u t minus j. So, finally, it gives you the Walt representation for vector processes. Now, here notice that gamma y u l is equal to you just find gamma y u l from here. This is equal to psi minus l sigma, where sigma is actually the variance covariance matrix of u. Then this implies that psi l is equal to gamma y u minus l sigma inverse, which is equal to covariance y t u t minus l sigma inverse. So, the coefficients matrix ga, psi l have same interpretation as that of the linear regression matrices of y t and u t minus l. Now, in this lecture we have discussed uh, extension of a univariate time series process to multivariate case when you have uh, ob, uh, different time series variables which are interrelated with each other, then uh, you may consider those, all those variables simultaneously and uh, considering all those variables simultaneously in for modeling purpose may improve your forecasts. Uh, further, uh, the analysis of these multivariate time series processes is quite different from the usual multivariate analysis. We have also discussed the stationarity conditions for a multivariate process 
and uh, the walled representation for multivariate processes. So, I am going to stop here. Thank you. Hello, I am A. K. Sharma and I teach sociology in IIT Kanpur. You may ask, how do sociologists view religion? Religion is becoming an important issue for our society. Now, sociologists, uh, this is true that sociologists uh, explain one thing in terms of other things of society. So, religion, if you ask sociologists to explain religion, they will explain religion in terms of other things of society like education, economic development. In sociology of religion, there are two major traditions actually. In one tradition, uh, to use language of methodology, in one tradition, religion is a dependent variable in another tradition, religion is an independent variable. What I mean is that in, uh, in the view of Karl Marx, who said that religion is the opium of the working class, religion is closely associated with contradictions or relations of class in society. Marx believed that as time passes, societies evolve and this evolution of society is dialectical like uh, from a classless society to a class society, class formation and eventually again a classless society will emerge. Karl Marx believed that laws of human behavior or laws of society are specific to uh, stage of development of society and are closely associated with mode of production or tools and techniques of production and ownership of tools and techniques of production. To Karl Marx, uh, who think that a modern society is a capitalist society, uh, religion is the dependent variable which needs to be explained in terms of class relations. And when he says that religion is the opium of the working class, it means that religion is used by the powerful class, the class which owns the means of production uh, to legitimize their class position or to confuse the workers. Let the workers think that if they are poor, if they are exploited and if they suffer from various kinds of problems. It is because of their fate or their deeds in the previous birth and not develop uh, the revolutionary consciousness to analyze the real causes of their poverty or exploitation or ill health. This is one view and religion is the dependent variable, which also means that tomorrow in socialist society or in communist society, if it ever emerges and society becomes classless once again, uh, religion may not exist. Now, according to another view, Max Weber, religion is actually the independent variable that explains emergence of something else and that something else is uh, the emergence of capitalism. Max Weber said that unlike uh, in the Hindu countries or the Muslim countries or Christian countries where influence of Catholic Christianity was rampant, uh, 
capitalism as we understand by capitalist institutions, uh, capitalism could not have developed. It does not mean that uh, people Hindus or Muslims or Catholic Christian they were not acquisitive in nature, but there was a difference between them and those influenced by Protestant ethics in certain countries of Western Europe. And the difference was that these people uh, did not use what they earned from their enterprises for comforts or for saving or for uh, security or for, uh, uh, for uh, status or prestige. For, but uh, whatever they earned from their enterprise, they further invested this in the enterprise itself and they lived simple life. By living simple life and spending the earnings back in the enterprise leads to emergence of capitalism in Western Europe. Here you see that religion is the cause. So, at some point of time, some philosopher, uh, his name was Colvin, you know, uh, who gave uh, a new turn to Christianity and propounded the philosophy of a new philosophy of Protestantism, also called Puritanism, uh, the theory of predestination, which created anxiety in people's mind to know whether they are elect or not, whether after their death they will go to hell or heaven. So, this uh, reinvesting in enterprise and not using the profits for their own gains or for their own comforts, this produced. Uh, capitalist society or industrialization, in, in simple language industrialization or uh, this produce economic development first in the countries of Northwest Europe. And another issue which sociology tackles uh, with regard to religion is whether we are secularizing. Now, it has been found that in the western countries with urbanization, economic development, industrialization, education, democracy, uh, there is a fall in religiosity. But in our country, uh, secularization is defined in a different way because we are a plural society and for thousands of years all religions have been juxtaposed in our country. So, we define secularization as a process in which a state maintains equal distance from all the religions, but does not become irreligious state. So, uh, but this kind of definition or this approach of a state obviously is going to uh, raise new issues, new social problems and you know, uh, religious issues, other issues, but this is what it is. So, uh, sociologists of religion will also study this process of secular tensions in the process of secularization in a plural country like India. Thank you.